again so we can go live here. Oh. Are we alive on Zoom? Wait, where's that music coming from? I just heard some some rap music came on here real quick. Oh, that was a video. Oh. <laughs> um, You want the the stick to hold it with? No. Okay. Do we have any people coming on? Uh, there's one person. You're not yet. Maybe you can set it on there. Yeah. Okay, team. Are we ready to go? <coughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you once again for maybe this is your first time too. Thank you for joining me this evening. I know there's so many things we could be doing during these COVID times, right? <laughs> no, I'm just choking, choking, joking. Um, I guess what I want to say is this is a wonderful time for reflection and to learn more uh, about ourselves, believe me. This is why I think this what this is all about. So I'm Karen Calabrese. I have been a practicing vegan for over 50 years. I'm a raw foodist. Uh, I own a holistic wellness center. I teach classes and I've written books and I'm here to answer your questions tonight. Uh, the thing that I kind of wanted to start with this week though is uh, because so many of us learn about new things and how do we put it into action, right? How do we go from we have a new idea, we've learned something new, and how do we put it into action? Because that seems to slow us all up to some degree. I remember 50 years ago when I bought my first Champion Juicer, right? I was so excited. I had read Dr. Walker's book and I was all ready to start juicing and whatever. And I bought a Champion Juicer. It was pretty expensive at the time. And then it sat on my kitchen counter for three months before I even opened up the box, right? And that is the way so many of us because we, our brains change, but we don't learn to change our surroundings around us also. So I'd like to hear any issues you may have going on with this year. And I can help you because I've certainly been getting myself over the bridges the past 50 years. They pop up the whole time I'm here. And I've learned how to keep crossing over and over and over. So I like to begin everything though by saying I don't believe there's a right or a wrong or a good or a bad or a yes or no or this way or that way. I believe that we are here to evolve. It doesn't matter how much money you make, how popular you are on Instagram or any of these social media or how great your children or your husband or your wife or your mother and father. What we're really here for is the evolution of our body, brain, and our soul. So everything that comes at you, no matter, may makes sense or not is here to help with our evolution. So um, what's gonna, what are we going to do this year to keep our evolution moving forward? It's finding ways to cross the bridges and put into practice what it is we're learning, what, what it is we re that resonates with us. Because there's a right and a wrong, there's a pro and a for everything out there, but it's what sits with your heart, what works with you, is where you're supposed to move forward next. Of course, you know, for, uh, for me, for most of you, my wish is that you become vegans, you know, no uh, meat, fish, chicken, or dairy. It's better for the planet, it's better for you. And what we have to remember is every single thing we eat, this is what we become. So it's not a natural human instinct to eat dead flesh. We've just kind of learned it. So that would be a great resolution for some of you if you're still eating the animals that maybe I'm going to try this year to give up animals for a week or for a day or for a month just to see if it makes a difference. And here's the beauty of that uh, little experiment. It will make a difference. There's no way it can't. Cause and effect is what rules the universe. 
And if you're continually putting something in your body, I like to call it the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given. If you're continually putting in the wrong things, eventually it's going to catch up, cause and effect. So it doesn't matter if you say, well, I don't do much dairy or I don't eat meat often or I only eat lamb or I only eat fish. If it wasn't intended to go in here, it has to create an imbalance. And wherever your predisposed weakness is from your parents or grandparents and so forth, it's going to eventually come out. This is why uh, challenges, the same challenges can run in the families. You know, my family, all the women in my family died overweight and very young. My mom died at 47, my grandmother died at 50, and my great-grandmother died at 60. So at 74, I should certainly be close to being pretty, in, you know, sick of something. I don't know what illness is, folks. I don't know what being sick is. I don't know what being tired is. I sleep four and a half hours a night. Um, I work you know, seven days a week when I, I mean, it's just not slowing down for me. And it's 74, from what I understand and what's written out there and what I hear, I'm supposed to be having a different experience. And the reality is, it's, I don't feel any different than I did 40 years ago. Maybe I'm wiser and I'm smarter, and you know, I create different boundaries around myself, which hopefully we grow into learn more about. But you know, that whole aging thing they're talking about, it just isn't my reality, and it doesn't have to be your reality if you find changes and bridges to make the changes so that you don't fall down this rabbit hole that most of the world is living in right now. It's, it's really, and it's not your fault. You're not stupid. You're not dumb. You're not unmotivated. There's a negative gravitational pull to go in the wrong direction. The world is set up to do that. So we really have to kind of band together tribally like we're doing when we meet together in these chat rooms and whatever, and we have to really rely on each other to continue to remember and spark that remembrance that there is something different. This isn't the way. We're not supposed to get sick and die the way we do. Yes, we will all transition at some point, but certainly not as soon as people are. You know, people were meant to last several hundred years ago. You are a self-regenerating organism. You get new cells every seven years. You get new tissue every three months. The body's always recycling itself. But if it doesn't get enough of the right material and it gets too much of the wrong material, then this is when your disease and old age and all the different manifestations of things that are we're so terrified of. You know, cancer, when I used to teach 20 years ago, it was one in 10 people would get cancer. Then 10 years after that, it was one in 10. Then it was one in four. Now it's every other person you know has cancer. Every other person. What's going on? It's not coming out here from somewhere deciding to attack certain people. It's being created by what we do in here on a daily basis. That's all it is. And to make the changes, the most important part of that is finding a way to be consistent with the changes you choose. That, that's really the biggest part of the equation of everything is the consistency. So my wish is that everybody out there is either vegan already or giving it a try or vegetarian or raw food or something along the, the, the journey to do different than what's expected of us. So if you've got any questions, complaints, or small and large miracles, I'm here to share them with you or answer your questions. Or do we have any questions? Oh, we got questions already. I thought I was going to have to burp, burp. I'll talk forever. OK, what's, do we have a question? Yeah, um, <coughs> Marilyn Boykins from YouTube. Uh, says, hi Karen, what do you use the different colored pillows for on the table near you? Uh, you paid them to say that, didn't you? <laughs> well, you know what, okay, now this is it. I got the pillow, the rest of the, uh, these are my meditation pillows and they're, they're so wonderful and I, I have one at home. I use it to meditate on every single day of my life. People often ask me, what do you have for breakfast? You know, First of all, I don't believe in breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I don't believe we have a little toe telling us to eat, a tag on our toe saying, eat at this time and this time. So the first thing I do when I wake up is I pray and I meditate. That I would call my breakfast. So these are our meditation pillows, and they're really very special pillows. They're not just a pillow. Um, they're handcrafted. Uh, they're we have women working to make them that may not otherwise be able to find uh, employment where they make a fair wage, so we're, we're paying fair wages for them. It's all natural ingredients made in the USA. Uh, there's buckwheat seed in here, I think, and so it kind of conforms to your booty, or you can put it between your knees at night to sleep. I like to just kind of hang on to it, so now I got the pillow the rest of the show. Thank you very much, Marilyn. But anyway, so we have them for sale. You can go to shopkarens.com. And we have beautiful colors. We even did a, a heart-shaped one for Valentine's Day, but you could use it at any time. Because remember, your heart, your soul, it's all connected. Any more questions? Yeah. Um, Pepper Diva asks, 
After working out, I crave carbs. What are the best foods to eat when going carb crazy? You know, what I recommend is a drink that we make and sell called Rejuvelac uh, because it's living enzymes and it's protein. But what would I, you know, I would just do a, a nice green, I do my green meal smoothie. I would do something that I was adding Irish moss to it because it, a lot of the cravings come from nutritional deficiencies. So if we kind of fill in all of those holes with the protein and calcium with a good drink, my green meal smoothie is for that or a spirulina drink or something with greens in it to fill in the nutritional holes. Will it work immediately? Maybe not necessarily, but if you continue to do that, you'll find that the cravings kind of leave you. And sometimes you just have to emotionally accept the craving too. But anybody else? Yeah, um, Plastic Buddies says, I've been exhausted since cutting out dairy and meat this month but my body is banging, so balance. <laughs> you, well, you know what, that fatigue, and, and what I would recommend to you is doing a good detoxification program. I have one that I highly recommend. But the thing of it is, your body, just because you stopped doing it, doesn't mean it's gone out of your system. You know, animal products can stay in your body. You can eat a piece of meat and find traces of it 10, 15 years from now. It doesn't go in and come out necessarily, especially if it wasn't supposed to go in. So it's rotting, it's putrefying. So you've given up these things, but I'm sure you still have lots of excessive mucus in your body from the years that you were eating these foods. So what we need to do is we need to do a good detoxification program in the process of making the changes. And I really attribute that to all of my success. You know, I've been doing this over 50 years, long before anybody was even thinking about doing it. There were just a few of us, but it was the whole, I continued to detox my body. I learned from Dr. Ann Wigmore, who started a, a, a large part of our detoxification programs. And then I went on to use her program, develop my own and stuff that I learned in Asia. So a good detoxification program, Karen's is a good one, uh, can help you with that to get more energy as you're making the transition. <coughs> Um, Sahuba McGee asks, what juicer would you recommend? Oh my goodness, there are so many wonderfuls on the market. You know, when I started, we just had the champion with the one auger. Uh, I would recommend finding something with a, a, a twin auger or a press, because then your juices will be more efficient, They'll they'll last longer, they'll work better for you. Um, but you know, there's so many good ones on the market. Uh, I think that Omega is a good priced one, and it's a press also. And uh, I think I got mine, uh, I, have a, I have a Norwalk, I have all the green juicer, I have all those others, but my little Omega is working just beautifully for me and they're very cost efficient. So I'd get a press though, or a twin auger, I'd look for that. Um, Amy Bauman, hi, my body temp is so low and I'm so cold eating raw vegan. I love it though, I drink warm lemon water when I meditate and when I meditate I warm up. When I exercise, I get warm, otherwise, burr. Well, you got some cayenne pepper at home? Well, put a little cayenne pepper in your so between your foot and your sock. You don't want it right on your skin, and it will actually warm, heat up the whole body. I would also start adding cayenne to my salads. When I had the, the restaurant, we had a salad bar. There was always cayenne pepper at the end because I wanted people to put it on their salads. We're in Chicago, but it also helps to warm the body and break up the mucus in the system. So I would uh, put a little cayenne pepper in my socks, start adding ginger to your juices and your meals. That'll help to warm you up. And uh, eventually, your body will adjust. We are adjustable animals. And I've been raw for close to 40 years now, and I live in the dead of winter in Chicago, and I don't walk around freezing or cold. Your body temperature is going to remain a little lower, though, because who's to say what the norms are with everybody eating the cooked food, right? I say we're normal with the lower body temperature. Uh, we've got a question from Instagram here. What's good for maintaining good bowel movements? Eating good food? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so many, uh, and by the way, dairy is one of the main um, a little uh, soldiers of making you constipated. Dairy is, is just terrible for everybody, for all human beings. But um, we do do a product called, uh, we have a product called ozonated magnesium that will help get your body starting. But once again, I'm going to go back to a good detoxification program into bringing your body into balance. Now, I must say, I'm answering that question not knowing how you eat either. Okay, because there's some foods that we can eat that are very constipating. There are all kinds of things other than dairy and sugar. There are many things, and it depends on the combination of your foods. But I would say um, if you're vegan, a good detoxification program and possibly adding psyllium 
or our ozonated magnesium would really be helpful. I got some right here. You just take it at night before bed and you'll sleep like a baby and poop like one in the morning too. Another question here. Wheatgrass juice doesn't taste so terrible now. Does that mean it's not working anymore? Uh, well, what happens, it, it could possibly mean that you've, you've uh, gone, you've reached a level, you've gotten over the dirt, but there are other layers of dirt. You know, our bodies are like onions. We have to peel back the dirt unless you've been a raw vegan from birth. So I would say you might be going through a period where your system just isn't doing a lot of detoxing. And so when I would go to the Optimal Health Institute twice a year to do my detoxification program, it was one of Dr. Wigmore's places at the time, uh, where normally I would drink one or two ounces of wheatgrass. Well, I wanted to get some detoxing going. So I'd go there and I'd drink seven or eight ounces in a sitting and well, I'd get pretty sick from it. But you know, enjoy the honeymoon because if you just keep doing it consistently like you're supposed to, it will eventually kick up some dirt again. And I would add some other greens. I would add spirulina or green kamut. That's the way I do all the greens not just wheatgrass. So they all have a slightly different cellular structure. So I would add another green and keep going. Um, Smiley uh, asks, do you eat straight fruit meals? Do I eat straight fruit meals? You know, that's kind of like a trick question because if you're transitioning into a vegan lifestyle or a raw lifestyle, Emotional, you're going to want more sugar. And I know there are a lot of people out there that are happy. They're calling it the fruitarian. Uh, and we were meant to be fruitarians. Unfortunately, our circumstances that we live with, the world has become so hostile to humans. It depends on where you live, how your body metabolizes it. So no, I don't eat all fruit meals because diabetes runs in my family. I am in a cold climate. And um, I am 74 years old. So the sugar is not going to work well for me at this stage of the game. Uh, you know, I give myself a treat, but I am not a fruitarian. I get in more greens than I do fruit. My hair is thinning out since I started eating more raw vegan. Any recommendations? Yeah, you're giving me commercials. Well, actually, I have a wonderful shampoo and conditioner, a raw one without any uh, chemicals or anything in it. But you know, I know I sound like a broken record, but that detoxification, your body is still a product of all the stuff it was before you came to this. And so we got to clean out the old stuff. And you know, it's kind of like having a punch bowl, you know, and you got a turd in it, right? And you can take the turd out, but you know it was still there. Well, you got a lot of old turds in your body from before, literally, that need to come out and you need to get rid of. That will also help with your transitioning in general to uh, your your. Uh, body temperatures, your thinking, everything, a good detoxification program would help tremendously. Karen's. Uh, Pepper Devo from YouTube. My son is eight years old. He is autistic and has ADHD. I opted out for medicine. What do you recommend for foods to eat and to help him focus in school? Yeah, well, first of all, oxygen, uh, getting more oxygen to his brain would be extremely beneficial. Once again, we have a product. We have a, a liquid oxygen that you could do drops of. We have a hyperbaric chamber here. Uh, we have all kinds of oxygen. I'm real big on oxygen treatments, especially our children that are suffering imbalances internally. When man was created, the oxygen levels were at 38%. After the Industrial Revolution, they were down to 22%. And we're living in the teens in terms of oxygen. All viruses, cancer cells, and underdevelopment is due to lack of oxygen. So more oxygenated foods, a more raw diet, of course, would help him tremendously. I would definitely cut out as much sugar as possible, even natural sugars, I would limit to a, a degree. And when I had sugar, I'd make sure I was getting some kind of a green with it. I made the, the coolest thing this weekend, and it wasn't even for a kid. I had some old bananas in the house, and I had some spirulina, and I had some um, cacao. And I just took them and smashed them all up together. I'm sorry, team, I ate them all. <laughs> <laughs> I smashed them all together, the spirulina, the banana, and the cacao, and I put some um, maple syrup in it, and I smushed it all together, and then I put it on my dehydrator trays, and I made this rubbery, these cookies, it was so delicious. So you can get sweets into them that way, but if you get a green with it, but definitely cut out as much sugar as you can. Um, coconut sugar is probably the easiest on the uh, glycemic index in the body and the system. So those are my recommendations. Now I'm not a doctor and I don't have any credentials to tell you what to do, but if it were my child, this is what I would do. Uh, I like the way you raise your hand. <laughs> Hello, 
Hello, need help healing from Hashimoto. I am vegan. Yes, okay, Hashimoto. I had some form of that, I believe, at some point. I have not been to a medical ND in 45 years, except for I've broken some bones falling. Um, and I'm not recommending that for anyone else. But I had a big thing in my throat and goiters run in my family. Uh, I would definitely, definitely, definitely 2,000% start doing Irish moss. This is going to be phenomenal for your thyroid. But here's the, the thing that I want to point out. And I will mention things specifically, but I really want to get us away from that one bullet theory. Like, I have this wrong. I take this for this. I take this for that. I, you know. It's one body. Everything is housed in one system. So you really need to work on, and that's where the detoxification program comes in, you really need to work on everything. But for you, I would definitely add systemic enzymes. Uh, that's what I did to get rid of mine. Irish moss, and um, it's 92 of the 102 minerals your body needs, and specifically for the thyroid um, health. So um, hopefully that helps. Uh, stay tuned and let me know how it works or what's working for you. Um, Smileen from YouTube says, you look beautiful. I've seen you around Chicago since the 70s. I've been around since the 70s. That's right. I'm 74 years old, folks. Uh, technically on April 20th, 420. That's my birthday. You can write it down if you want. It means more than marijuana day. It's Karen's birthday, okay? So... Uh, my birthday is 420, and I will technically, according to people's years, be 74, but according to my thinking, I'll be 75, because you're here a year before your first birthday, right? So I will have been on the planet 75 years, and thank you for saying that and noticing, because I'm not aging at the rate other people are. Uh, yes, I'm getting older. Yeah, I've got some lines in my face. I'm not doing anything about it yet, no Botox or fillers or anything. I want to see how far I can go without it, uh, plus I'm terrified of doctors. But um, thank you so much for the compliment. Did you have a question, or did you just want to sing? My She's giving you five. <laughs> thank you. Can I do the 28-day detox plan back to back? Yes, absolutely you can. Uh, I, in fact, I had a woman that worked with, oh, I didn't do my work either. I didn't bring the board. Uh, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a woman that did my detox class every other month for eight months. That's because I didn't do them every, uh, every month at the time. She lost 100 pounds. That's what she wanted to lose. Uh, she wanted to lose weight, but yes. And for those of you who aren't ready to jump in on a 28-day, I do have a 10-day detox, a smaller, you know, kind of easier one to do. And then I have just a 30-day challenge you can sign up for where there's just three products that you do in addition to eating what you want. So there are three different ways you can kind of jump in on my programs if you choose or you can just keep showing up here when I do these twice a month and ask your questions for free. Um, Plastic Buddies asks, when you juice or make smoothies, do you add any liquid, uh, water or soy, or can you just uh, use fruit and veggies? Well, when I juice, when I'm using a vegetable juicer, it's extracting the fiber, and I just, I don't add anything to it. If I'm making a smoothie, I may add a product that we make and sell called Rejuvelac, which is living enzymes. That's what we use in our green meal smoothie. Or I may add a little water, you know, some of my blessed water I have at home, or um, you could add apple juice or something else. Yeah, I, I don't, or water, yeah. I do add when I make smoothies, um, but I don't add when I make juice. Joy R from YouTube. In addition to detox, what do you suggest for protecting the colon? <laughs> I was going to make a funny, I won't. Uh, <laughs> uh, for protecting the colon, well, I, once again, it's what you eat. It's everything you eat, sweetheart. You know, what I like to remind people is you start out as a little baby, like about this, right? And how do we grow to this size that we are? It's from what we eat. So everything is going through everything. So you want to eat fiber-rich foods. You want to eat vegan. You want to be as close to raw as possible. All of these things are going to protect your colon. They're going to protect everything. Because, you see, it's the way God intended us to eat. We are the only animals that go so far out of our own spirit of what we're supposed to eat, you know, by eating dead animals. It's not a natural human instinct to do this. So I'm glad you've gone past that. But then you have to get in more raw 
foods. This is the way God intended every animal on the planet to eat. Humans are the only animals that voluntarily cook their foods. No other animal on the planet cooks their food except human beings. And we feed our pets that we bring into the house cooked food too. And they have vets and shots and diarrhea and cancer and obesity and the same things we get. Animals in the wild that are eating raw do not get these diseases. So I would say maybe your next step to take in protecting your colon is to go more raw. Is there anything special you would do to heal from past fractures? Yes, I get in my hyperbaric chamber as often as I can. I do my liquid oxygen every day uh, because it helps the cells to repair faster. Uh, when it, after my, you know, I broke my shoulder in 17 places and then I split my kneecap down here and I have a pin in my knee and they wanted to take the pin out. I didn't want to go back into surgery again. I was on a walker. I couldn't lift my arms any further than this. I went through uh, physical therapy. I was off the cane, the walker by then, but you know, they said I wouldn't dance anymore. I'm walking three miles a day. My arm, look, it's almost all the way up again. I couldn't take it any further than this. So I guess oxygenating my body, detoxing my body, and uh, eating is, and, and keeping movement. Yes, movement, and I do do yoga. I do walk. I think some form of movement is exceptionally important. How do I sign up for the 10 day detox? You go to shopkarens.com and I think it's all set up. You can set up right there at shopkarens.com. Let me know how you're doing too when you get all the information. Uh, you know, check in, let me know what's going on. Someone's asking, have you spoken about viruses? Have I spoken about viruses? Well, I did speak about viruses in, in my belief system that they can't live in an oxygenated environment. Um, I understand what's going on in the world right now, and I respect everyone's opinion because that's part of being a human being. We, just because we don't believe in the same things doesn't mean that we have to be at odds with each other. We can actually learn. Uh, for me to believe in worrying about getting a virus would be to negate everything I've done and believed in for the past 50 years. So I can't do that. I have no concern myself. I haven't been sick in 45 years. I don't know what a cold is. I don't know what a sore throat. I don't get sick. So for me to be concerned about that, but I do understand and I do understand people are getting very ill. I understand there's all kinds of politics and non-politics involved. I say take control of yourself, take this time. It can be like St. COVID, get indoors, learn all you can about yourself, experiment with new things for yourself, pray differently, meditate, go back to what you were doing, learn about you. This is an excellent time to find out where you can grow and change and evolve. Do I have a worry about the vaccine for myself? Personally, I don't. And I don't have for um, any of the people that I know that are living in my lifestyle. So I'm gonna kinda let that go. Any recommendations for relieving anxiety? Yes, um, take as few chemicals, <laughs> get the chemicals out of your system, prayer and meditation. You know, there's a great app that you can get. I have it on my phone and it's free. It's called Insight Timer. And they have all these wonderful breath work. Because, you know, so much of what we do for anxiety, <gasps> we're just constricting our breath. We're holding ourselves. Oh, the pillow's coming again here, too. You know, we're constricting and are holding ourselves. So it's allowing the life flow to go through you. You know, even when you <gasps> you do this. And by the way, we've got a new therapy coming here. My dear friend, Alice Siroki, that did Partners in Wellness for a thousand years. She was doing colon therapy. She has a new therapy, and I don't want to say the name because I may not say it right, but it's exactly for this, for anxiety and worry. And the premise behind it is that when, um, when you frighten an animal, it automatically shakes or jostles or jumps, right? But we learn throughout our life, all the million little frightening things that happened or, or said or we do, that we kind of learn to kind of hold ourselves and not release it. So uh, she teaches this therapy where we learn to release this, and it's a tremor therapy. It's really kind of cool. I already did, so stay tuned for that. Um, oil of oregano is another wonderful herb to use. Uh, we have that right here. And when you find, when you do the oil of oregano, it kind of makes you feel like, I don't know, it's, it, it's putting the yeast in balance and it's making you feel very balanced. I do it before I meditate in the morning because it kind of takes my head to that place. But you take it and you put it under your tongue and it, you think it's awful, it burns, it's miserable, but you wait about a minute and then all of a sudden it's like the heavens open up and you just feel like, Wah! you know, you just feel kind of good from it. So oil of oregano, this new trimmer therapy we're going to be having and prayer and meditation with breath work.
let me know if any of them, how they work for you. Smiley asks, are there some juicers that are better with wheatgrass? Well, you know, actually, we're not supposed to mix wheatgrass with anything. That's, uh, you know, you go to stores and they give you a lemon with it or an orange with it. It's actually, it's supposed to be done straight. Uh, the only thing Dr. Wigmore ever recommended that we could do with wheatgrass was coconut water, young green coconut water, at least with those that too, because the fats get it into your system much quicker. But, um, you know, do your juice or have your wheatgrass and then have some juice about 20 minutes later or you know even if you have to do it right away afterwards uh you know find the bridge that works for you to get there but there's no juice that i recommend with it more than others i would recommend coconut water what are your thoughts on cooking food in the air fryer i also use it to warm up food as well yeah, I, you know, I don't know a lot about those. We had one at the cooked restaurant for frying, <coughs> and um, I, I, I don't know how hot it gets. You know, uh, I imagine it's better than frying. I don't know a lot about them, to be honest with you. I, I don't have a real strong critique on that for you. But uh, let me know if you find out. What's the best thing for neuropathy, pain in legs and feet? Yeah, well, uh, once again, where does the pain coming from? You know, I, do you have blood sugar issues or whatever? You know, um, a good detoxification. I'm going to keep coming back to that because it's going to work on the whole body. Um, the oil of oregano would be beneficial. But, you know, I don't know what you're putting into your system. You know, we, we, we learn and we concentrate on so much on what's the good stuff to do, but we don't think about what's the bad stuff I'm doing to create it. You know, and that's almost more important. So I may tell all of you I'm making all these recommendations, but if you're continuing with the same things you did to get to where you are, it's going to be a, a much more difficult road. So I, I we need know, to know more about, you know, when you were diagnosed. I will say here, I do one-on-one -on -one counseling. Uh, you can sign up at Shop Karen's also. <coughs> so I would definitely need to know more about that. But once again, I think a good detoxification program could be beneficial. Fenugreek seed might help too if it is a blood sugar, <coughs> excuse me, issue. Anything for anemia? <laughs> You're gonna get sick of hearing me say this about the detox. You know, <coughs> it could be your body isn't absorbing iron properly. I could recommend some iron products. I like Floridix, some that don't constipate you as much as others. Uh, I would definitely start doing the Irish moss. Uh, that would be very beneficial. But I really want to help you get out of this one bullet, one thing thinking. That's why I keep coming back to detox, detox, because you have to, you know, the, the liver isn't separated from the knee. I mean, in space, but they're all connected. Everything is connected to everything. And so you can't do one thing without affecting other things. And if you don't start affecting everything, you're going to get discouraged a lot sooner than you have to because eventually change is going to work. It's just going to take longer and longer and longer. Eventually it will work for you, but it just makes it much longer if you don't learn to eliminate. So if your body isn't absorbing, I don't know the other things you're eating. I will go back to I do one-on-ones also, but um, I need to know more about what, you, what you're doing and not doing. Do you ship the CMOS? Yes, we do. We ship it made and unmade. So you can make it yourself or you can get it in this cute little bottle yourself. And by the way, it's also good for facial. It's collagen. It's good for your hair. It's good for your face. So I take it. I smear it. I use it everywhere. And it's great in your raw meals. You can mix it in your smoothies and make all kinds of foods with it and stuff. So, Marilyn Boykins from YouTube. Last year, I was on a blood thinner due to a blood clot that traveled to my lungs. The doctor didn't recommend aspirin, so how can I keep my blood okay? Yeah, um, the greens. You know, when you do wheatgrass, spirulina, uh, chlorella, it's, it's, they've got actually the same molecular structure as your blood, except for the iron molecule with the wheatgrass. So as you're doing the greens, it's literally purifying and cleaning your blood out. Uh, and I know they have a problem with blood clots, but if you're not on the medication and vitamin K, they don't want you to do greens. Uh, I would also strongly recommend what I would do myself would be the uh, systemic enzymes. I would use that also. And there are some greens in that. I'll show you real quick. Oop, they're, they're way over there. Anyway, um, so that's a recommendation. 
Anybody else? Can you drink Rejuvalac with gluten sensitivity? Yes, uh, but if you have concerns, you can make Rejuvalac with quinoa, you can make it with rye. But according to Dr. Wigmore, who started the raw movement for us in this time, it was her belief system that it's the processed wheat that people are having the gluten intolerance. So I've actually had people with uh, celiac disease take my classes and drink the Rejuvalac. But, you know, if mentally you're uncomfortable with that, then I would say make it with rye or make it with, um, you can make it with any other grain, actually. Uh, Joy R, you mentioned a 30-day detox where you only have to purchase three items. I don't see this option on your website. It's called the 30-day challenge. Oh, it's not on there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's on there. <laughs> I'm not the person to ask the, the technical stuff. No, it's on there. It's called a 30-day challenge. They're checking right now. Hope that helps. Do you recommend dry fasting? Well, you know, if you've been cleansing and fasting and doing all this for years and years and years and years and years and you know your body like I do, but, you know, so much of what's going on now, I feel, is counterproductive depending on where you are in the process and can actually be damaging like I don't think you should be eating um, a meal of even vegan tacos one day and then juice fast the next day so it depends on the process you take to get there depends on how long you can do it because here's what fasting and cleansing does it releases poisons in your system and if you haven't been doing this consistently for years it's going to release all those poisons at once and you can get deathly deathly ill sometimes even deathly ill dr wigmore my teacher didn't even believe in people with uh stage four cancer fasting right away they had to be raw for a long time and do a lot of clean out before they could fast so it depends on where you are in the game uh you know i do all different types of fast but i've been doing this for over 50 years folks so and i don't want to discourage you by the way i don't want to discourage you i mean if you feel it's right for you be your laboratory and let me know how it works victoria cameron from youtube any thoughts on the shingles vaccine and can you address things in that family I sure can, <laughs> um, more so than I want to. Okay, some of you know that I had four years of pure hell. I, I went through hell, I, I closed my restaurants, I moved, blah, 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 and I'm not gonna go into it. And I moved into a new space. Meanwhile, through all this time, I, I had all my injuries, and uh, so I hadn't done a detox in I don't know how long. So I was out in the park with my dog, and this dog ran up to me and knocked me over. And I was like, wow and I limped home and then I fell back and then on the knee and everything and then the next day I started getting horrible pains in my groin area and these spots started developing on me and I'm going holy bad word what is going on <laughs> because I don't get sick nothing happens to me and the pain got so intense and so horrible I could hardly move so I said to my husband, he took me to my girlfriend's. I thought maybe the pin had come loose in my knee because I had this pin from the fall there. And so I went and got an x-ray and I said to the doctor, I said, do you think I have shingles? And he said, well, I'm not a, I'm a, a bone doctor. You need to go to a dermatologist for that because we're not all connected. Anyway, and so he said, uh, I don't know, but I was starting to feel, this, this sounds like a shingle thing, and then the spots were starting to come out, and the pain was excruciating. Anyway, I went to a dermatologist to get it diagnosed, which is not me. I was encouraged by people, and the dermatologist says, oh, yes, and we have to put you on. I mean, he named about three different antibiotics and stuff, and I haven't had an antibiotic in 50 years. I don't know. And if you don't do this, the pain is going to get more intense. So I immediately went to my mode. I haven't been doing all my stuff. I haven't been detoxing. I've been under a lot of stress, right? And then I guess the fall triggered the stress and I, I did have shingles. Well, I just want to tell you, I got done with it in a week, which is unheard of. Um, I uh, fasted, I cleansed, I did um, baking soda baths. I uh, did everything I knew to do and I was done with it in a week. So I believe you can overcome it. It depends on how motivated you are. Would I get a vaccine? I personally would not get a vaccine, but that's me. Uh, and I don't know how, you know, I would research it a thousand percent to see how people have reacted and how, they, how it's worked for them. Um, but um, I personally would never get a shingles vaccine. 
can you grow wheatgrass at home? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's how I started. There was no wheatgrass when I started 50 years ago, guys. I had to grow it in my home. In fact, my daughter was so embarrassed. We lived in Evanston, and she had a boyfriend, and she was at her boyfriend's house for dinner, and he said, you know, Nicole's mother grows grass in their house. <laughs> and, <so laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and it wasn't legal then either. Uh, so, But they thought I was growing marijuana. Yes, and I grew it hydroponically. I've grown it with soil. Uh, it's probably the, oh, you have to use hard red winter wheat only. You can't use any other kind of wheat. You have to be pretty precise with the soaking times with that where you don't have to do with other sprouting. But it is very doable and it's fun. So yes, you can grow it at home. Um, <coughs> Instagram says they missed the hot restaurant. Well, there's so many of them now, though. You don't need me anymore. That's why when I open up, I'm not going to even do cooked because, ev you know, when I opened up my vegan cooked restaurant 15, 16 years ago, there were only two other vegan restaurants in Chicago. So I felt we needed one. You don't need me anymore. You got so many here. Okay, let me relax a little bit, please. <laughs> um, plastic Buddies, uh, when you say soak your nuts, does that mean... <laughs> that going to a Whole Foods, for example, and getting almonds, cashews in bulk, um, and eating them as is, is bad? I don't want to use the word bad. It's not as efficient for your body, okay? I don't want to say it's bad because it's going to be better than eating a burger, <laughs> you know, or it's going to be better than eating some chicken, uh, a lot better than those things. So I don't want it to be bad. You could just make it more, okay, here's the deal. All right, say you want some nuts, and you buy a bag of nuts, you're going to eat that bag of nuts. If you soak them, because they're more efficient for your body, it takes one quarter the amount to fill you up, which means your digestive system works less, which means you can get the energy from the food that much faster, and you're not going to overeat. So there's a reason to soak them, but if you're not going to soak them, please eat them anyway. How and with more diet, was it an accident? Oh, everybody's getting trying to get me political here tonight. <laughs> Uh, none of us believed it was at the time. Uh, it was very strange that she died in a fire in her attic, in her, her, her mansion there that had been donated to her. Um, we all have our doubts, and I think there's a, I, I don't like to get into politics on this platform necessarily. I do in private, you know, dinners and stuff like that, but um, it's not always seen as a positive thing when we can help people to get results in a different way that doesn't cost an arm and a leg and lots of medication. Uh, she did have her, dis her distractor. She had a lot of problems because she was doing this long before anybody was doing it. And um, I don't know, I'm, I never believed it, but. We have a comment on your oil of oregano. Uh, she's healthy too, says it's powerful, it kills viruses, and she keeps it on hand year round for colds and flus. Absolutely. It's, it's the, one of the main things that should be in your medicine chest, oil of oregano, I'm telling you. It's, um, it's a phenomenal product, and it's, it's really, it's going to keep that yeast in balance. It's going to help calm you down. It's going to help smooth life out for you. I would definitely get the oil of oregano. Uh, Plastic Buddies from YouTube. Um, Frank's Red Hot Hot Sauce is so good. Did your restaurant have anything in comparison that could be substituted? I know spicy things sometimes really affect people, so just wondering. Frank's? Hmm. See, I'm not... Do, do we use Frank's? No, we didn't no, use Frank's. I was Frank's. just curious if there was anything like... Oh, like, like Frank. Frank's. Well, you know, you can get in the kitchen and make your own hot sauce. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. I grew peppers this summer. Uh, I don't have anything comparable because I don't know that much about Frank's, to be honest with you. I love hot sauce, though. I'm a black woman. I put hot sauce on everything. That's what we do, okay? So I love hot sauce. Uh, my favorite is, um, what's the one? Ch Chula, 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 Chula. That's my favorite. Cholula, Cholula, that's my favorite. And I don't know how healthy it is or good or bad, but I love Cholula hot sauce. So, you know, am I perfect? No. And do I want to be perfect? No. Because <laughs> I think when you're perfect, there's nothing to learn and it's time to ascend. So I don't mind not being perfect. Hi, Karen. Do you prefer flax oil or coconut oil? Well, it depends on what it's for. Uh, I use coconut oil for oil pulling my teeth in the morning. I use it on my skin. I mix it with castor oil on my skin. I use it in my hair. I use it in my food. So I use it, but I use flax oil uh, medicinally also 
Uh, but I use it in food too because it adds a nice buttery flavor to raw foods and stuff. So I actually, I use them both. You know, it's just like the greens. I don't start one thing and stop another. I don't say this is better than the other. In my world, I use them all. So I use coconut and flax and castor oil. I don't eat the castor oil, but I use it on my body. Uh, Pepper Diva, I'm in my late 30s. Any products and foods I should start taking to preserve my health? When did you come on here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a smart ass. Um, yeah, well, first of all, I credit mine not looking 75 years old because I've been a vegan for 50 years and I detox minimum four times a year. And that's, that's the real thing to tell you because you can be a vegan, you can be a vegetarian, you can be raw food, you can have all these different pescatarian, no matter what label you give yourself, you still need to clean your body out, in my opinion. I'm living in a hostile circumstances. I live in Chicago. I drive behind buses. I'm taking in chemicals. I'm taking in chemicals on my skin. I talk about I get organic food but the organic farm is right next to the pig farm the wind doesn't stop so we're living in a very toxic environment for human beings so I think that I've maintained and I started in my 20s doing cleansing and detoxing I met Dr. Ann Wigmore so I really credit it actually here's the deal if I had my little thing that everybody says is my responsibility every line on your face is showing you what's going on internally in your body right so these uh, lines under here, these are your adrenals and your kidneys, you know, and you'll find if you drink a lot of coffee or soda pop or stay up late or eat late, you, you go out drinking, you have these under your eye. And this is, uh, there's a lymph system that needs to be drained here too. Uh, this little line, the 11s that everybody is getting zapped, um, this is your spleen pancreas and then the lines across your forehead, this is excessive mucus in your digestive tract. And these this is your liver and small intestines and one side is usually deeper than the other side. So you can actually do my detox. We have pictures and we have in the book too of people before and after. You do the detox and you literally look 10, 15 years younger. I'll be doing one again coming up because my birthday is coming up. I just finished one. And it's really people coming, oh my God, what are you doing? I've just stopped eating and drinking and I'm detoxing and it makes all, the so you can keep yourself going backwards. And like I said earlier, it has a lot to do with what you're putting in on a consistent basis to get some greens in, get spirulina, green meal, green living fiber, all of these things, the greening of the planet of your internal environment, because we're the same as everything around us. And I'll go into that another time. Jazz from the Zoom asks, what were some of your spiritual benefits when starting out raw vegan? Oh, thank you for asking that. I love that because you know what? I really would like to concentrate on that the most with this change. You know, every major religion has a fasting time. It's to make your connection. And you don't have as much to fast out when you're raw and vegan. Things just kind of come to you differently, synchronistically. Life just kind of, even when it doesn't feel good, it's falling into place and you know it. Um, even before I came to this, when I was uh, a vegetarian, I used to go to the Buddhist temple and do the slow meditation. And then I'd go to Catholic church and go to mass. And then I'd go to the gospel church and listen to gospel. And then I'd go to the Om, Om, uh, Om Namah Shivaya people. I mean, I was like a spiritual junkie. I went everywhere. And I think when I got closer into my cleansing and being a raw vegan, I didn't need to go outside my such so much. The answers were here to go out. So I, I got a lot, I didn't have to, I didn't, I continue to search, I'll always be a student, yes. But more answers came to me without even thinking about it. It was like the angels were walking around talking to me all the time. It was, it's amazing, it really is. I live in this world for vanity and the spirituality. I'll turn it around, spirituality and vanity. <laughs> <laughs> because it's amazing. When I was a vegetarian, when I went from being a meat eater to a vegetarian, I thought, oh my God, this feels good. And then I went from being a vegetarian and a vegan, I thought, oh wow, this is how we're supposed to feel. And then I went from being a vegan to a raw foodist, and it was like, and then from that to fasting and cleansing, I, I could walk on water, I'm serious. So wherever your journey is, just keep moving forward. I'm still, I'm not done. I'm going to do something mo very different for my birthday cleanse coming up. I'm not going to even discuss it. <laughs> Gigi's Healthy Happy Lifestyle asks, what can I do to boost my very low iron and digestion issues? Well, I would definitely start doing some digestive enzymes. I would definitely start doing the um, 
the uh, Irish moss. I would definitely start doing um, probiotics. And I would definitely do a detox. I know you're going to get sick of hearing me say that, but really taking care of the whole body and not spot checking it is the ultimate answer. And you can get some results. Like I say, you're asking me what to do, but I don't know what you're putting in on a regular basis, too. That's just as important. Because a lot of times you may be doing the foods and you're not absorbing it. So once again, that's a cleaning out program. Even if you're getting iron-rich foods, you're not absorbing it. Um, Joy R. asks, what, uh, or would you discuss your detox clay and how to use it? Oh, sure. Um, this is it. Yeah, there's so many ways to use this too, like the collagen. Uh, we take it internally during the fast and detoxing, but because it's minerals also, you can take it year round. You don't just have to do it during the detoxing. Uh, and what it does is it's absorbing the poisons. So it comes out in your poop better. So it's absorbing, it's pulling out. It's, as you're releasing the stuff, it's pulling it out and helping it to come out of your system. At the same time, it's adding minerals to your system too. You know, even if you're eating or organic, even if you're eating vegan and raw, the soil isn't what it was 120 years ago. We just don't have the, the minerals and the things in our soul. We're all mineral deficient to a degree. And so we're not absorbing, we're not, just everything is off. So you're getting minerals with this also. But I also take it and mix it with a little water and use it as a mask on my skin on my face. So it's got multi-purposes. So you can use it. Oh, okay. Here's an example. Thank, I'm glad I remember this. Okay. So one of the things that I absolutely love is corn. And I love raw corn. Raw corn with some uh, olive oil and Himalayan salt is unbelievable. But all the corn in this country is genetically modified. You can't get a corn seed. Every so often somebody says they have some, but I love corn. So I know anytime I eat corn, I puff up. It feeds the yeast in my system and I get a little puffy belly from eating corn because of all the chemicals in it. So I did a little experiment. I ate the corn and then I did the clay afterwards and it absorbed it right out and I didn't puff up anymore. So. Lots of uses here. But you have to make sure that you're drinking lots of liquids, too. You don't want to dry yourself out. What can I use the Dolph's Flakes in? Mm, um, well, I use them. I make a, um, a little paste out of it. I take my lemon herb dressing, and I... Um, mix it with that and then I use it as a spread on a raw bread or a manna bread but wait a minute bring that bowl over here girl I'm going to show you what I did for it. my team that comes and works late on a Saturday night to help me do this I make them this this is what happens so this is popcorn and it's got dulse and spirulina and earth balance butter and um, what else did I put in there um, Yeast, nutritional yeast. And this is their treat. This is their pay. This is everything. No. <laughs> so you can put on your popcorn. Um, you can sprinkle it in salads. You can make the paste. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. <laughs> I'm giving you popcorn instead of peanuts. <laughs> By the way, I have the most incredible team on the planet. I just have to tell you, they're worth every kernel of popcorn I bring. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, Victoria Cameron, who inquired about the shingles, mm -hmm. she's asking, did you put anything particular on them? Um, and what did I put on? how can you fortify yourself from cold sores, etc.? Well, cold sores and all those things, I'm not diagnosing, but it is, in my world, it's a direct relationship to yeast in the body. Uh, so if you're doing a lot of sugar that's going to feed the yeast, if you've ever been on birth control pills or antibiotics or um, even a lot of your meats and f your meats and dairy stuff, they have antibiotics in them too. So the, the, the candida albicans are put there to help us decompose after we die. It's a good yeast. It's, you know, God had a reason for it, our spirit, when he put it in your body. Unfortunately, we overfeed it throughout our lifetime. So it quadruples with sugar, alcohol, drugs, antibiotics, birth control pills, and all of these things are going to create the cold sores, discoloration on your skin, and itchy anus sometimes, uh, bloating after you eat. This is all related in my world to excessive yeast in the body. So first of all, uh, but the oil of oregano will help that with that tremendously. You can actually put that on the cold sores, the oil of oregano. You can put it on externally and internally. 
and a good detoxification program and I throw in I get some more a good probiotic or our probiotic enzyme would help too. Marilyn Boykins asks, are there any oils or ointments you can use when you have aches or pains? I have knee pains. Castor oil, castor oil. Oh, yeah, and my CBD oil. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'm a little off tonight, guys. Okay, so we have a CBD oil, CBD cream, which is very beneficial, and I actually like to use that on my shoulder. And um, what else did I say before? Castor. Oh, and castor oil is very good for pain, too. An external castor oil will help uh, also. And the systemic enzymes. Uh, they have MSM in them, and they're for pain and inflammation. And when I broke my shoulder and my kneecap and I couldn't do the painkillers, I was doing a ton of those every day for the pain and the inflammation, and it worked for me. Uh, Pepper Diva asks, how many times a day do you eat? Can you walk us through a typical meal? <laughs> well, you know what? Like I said, I said earlier, I don't believe we're supposed to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We're not supposed to eat three times a day. We're supposed to eat when we're hungry. And if you're hungry, you eat. If you're not hungry, you don't eat. If you're eating raw foods, it takes very little to fill you up if you've done detoxing. Now, I see a lot of raw foods out there they're eating trowels or salads, you know, huge salads, because they haven't cleaned their bodies out properly. So they aren't truly absorbing everything necessarily. A typical day, I get up in the morning and I have my blessed water. So I drink. Um, a whole bunch of water in the morning and then when and if I feel hungry I may have some coconut water and then and if I feel hungry I may have some wheatgrass or spirulina or vegetable juice or something green and then if I get hungry uh, I made some burgers out of some I called it my refrigerator burgers because I cleaned out everything you didn't know you were eating all the old stuff out of my refrigerator right I, I made refrigerator burgers <laughs> and I had a little refrigerator burger with some sauerkraut and some of the raw bread I make and then that's about it for the day. I have my Irish moss with maybe one of my uh, raw yogurts I make sometime. I don't eat a lot, but then there are days I eat like a pig. You know, uh, it doesn't happen often. Sometimes I just eat, 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 eat. Uh, so I don't have a set three times a day, five times a day of this. I eat when I'm hungry. I make sure it's raw. I make sure I start my day with water and all my greens first, and then I move out from there. But here's what I teach. If you start your day off right, your choices change throughout the day too. I read that most of the population had parasites. What are your thoughts, and do you recommend a cleanse? <sighs> Yes, I do. Um, yeah, a lot of people, especially if you're eating meat and sushi and stuff like that, uh, you're going to have uh, parasites. Yeah, they're, you know, but here's the thing. It depends on what the parasites are doing to you because bacteria and parasites is part of the human condition, even viruses. It's, part of, it's just that we've made our own internal environment so hostile that it can't handle the natural stuff around us. Parasites, yes, there are parasite cleanses you could do. I strongly recommend that you start with a regular detoxification and then go on to others to add them to them to just do a parasite cleanse. I don't know that I'm 100% in favor of that, but you know, if you choose to, let me know how it works for you. Uh, from the YouTube, this feels like too much information, but do you have any suggestions or remedies for vaginal dryness? Mm. <laughs> All the guys are grinning. <laughs> They're saying, we got an answer. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, once again, that's your internal balance. You know, I don't know what your hormones are like in, in the moment. I know that I went through menopause not even knowing I was going through menopause. I mean, nothing changed. In fact, I took a pregnancy test <laughs> in my 50s because I thought I was pregnant. I didn't realize I had gone through menopause. So it's not a, any, any symptom that your body manifests. It's just trying to shake you awake and say, you're out of balance, you're out of balance. It's not saying, give me one thing to take care of. Yes, there are many things you can do to help it. Once again, I'll get back to my detoxification program. It's amazing. I've even had women who didn't have a cycle anymore start to get their cycle again. I need to know more about what you're eating or how you're living on a regular uh, basis to make more recommendations to you. Once again, I do one-on-ones, but... Um, I, I would have to know more about you specifically, but not knowing that, a good detoxification program um, could be very beneficial. What do you recommend to boost brain health and energy as we age? Uh, well, not eating meat, fish, chicken, and dairy, that's for one, okay? <laughs> it's Once again, it's what we don't do more than 
adding on. Of course, there's wonderful things that we can do. All of our green drinks, all the chlorophyll things are going to add to your brain health. I do one particular, I call it my green magic. And the cell walls are broken down on that particular algae, so it goes right to your brain and feeds it. I do do that every day. I do all the greens. Um, but I'd say, more importantly, keeping yourself active, keep reinventing yourself, pay attention to what you're putting in or not putting into your body. I mean, we don't have to age at the rate they're kind of expecting us to, all right? It's not a reality unless you let it be a reality. You know, my whole life changed four years ago, and it was the biggest blessing I could have had because you don't have to just eat all the wrong foods. You could be stuck in many other ways. Are you watching the same judge shows every day? You know, are you going to the same restaurants every day? Are you just doing the same thing? That's kind of a little death in itself, too. You have to keep reinventing yourself. You have to keep looking for new, exciting things to do. Where's your bucket list? You know, I did something on my bucket list. For those of you on Instagram with me, uh, I used to go to the Asian uh, um, health clubs with my husband in Hong Kong and whatever, and you see those 80, 90-year-old women with not a wrinkle on their skin, right? Uh, they're walking around, and that clear skin like a 20-year-old, and they would go from the hot tubs to the cold tubs, cold tubs to the hot tubs. So I got a sauna in my home and whatever, and I would do the sauna and then do a cold shower. Well, now I live in a house in the suburbs. We had that big snow a couple of weeks ago or a week ago. I, was, I don't remember whenever it was. I went in my sada, I put my bikini on, and I went out in the snow. That was a bucket list thing. I'm sure you have a bucket list of stuff you've always wanted to do. That will keep you young, too. Keep reinventing yourself. Keep looking to explore and find new stuff. Be uncomfortable, because that's how you get change, when you're uncomfortable. Um, Jazz from the Zoom said, I notice when I eat raw foods, fruits and raw veggies throughout the day, I am not thirsty. Is that normal? Yeah, because you're getting organic water. Like cucumbers are 90% organic water. Watermelon is all water. So you are getting a lot of uh, organic water. But I would still say drink your water in the morning when you start out your day. Uh, because sometimes just because we're not feeling thirsty doesn't mean we aren't becoming a little dehydrated. But yes, fruits and vegetables, you're getting lots of organic water. Absolutely. Thoughts on Dr. Savy's beliefs and hybrid foods? Uh, I so respect Dr. Sebi. Uh, he was an incredible human being, and he brought so much knowledge to the table for us. Um, I don't go that far into the hybrid foods because I think most of the people that I'm working with in my time are har having a hard enough time going from the animals to the vegetables. So uh, I personally don't have the uh, damnation of, I'll never ever do one or the hybrid, like I even talked about the corn and celery and stuff that I do. But it depends on where you are in your journey. That's, that's the way I'd like to answer it. I don't think there's a right or a wrong to it. I think it depends on where you are in your journey, how it's going to work for you. But I so respect him. What an incredible human being. And we were so fortunate to have him. And they're putting their little watches at me in, and they got some stuff that I know they got to do. So they're telling me, it's time to get off the phone, Karen. Anyway. I <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to come meet them? Anyway, some people wanted to beat them up a few weeks ago because my voice, it was all their fault. I had nothing to do with it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I love this so much. You validate my life, your life. We need to get together like this as often as we can just to discuss new ideas. We don't have to agree with each other. It doesn't have to be a right or wrong or good or bad. It's the discussion. It's keeping it open and alive. It's knowing that there are other things to change and do. And please, re oh, when am I doing this again? I will be on again. I think it's two weeks. I think we have a March date. So you can check it out, tell friends and family uh, that I will be back on March to answer your questions, complaints, and small and large miracles. And thank you so much for joining me. And please remember that if you don't take care of your body, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given, where are you going to live? Thank you.